acts by the Commission, but also any other public administration by the use of emerging technologies or other innovative solutions in regulatory reporting for various reasons. Of course, there is always this administrative burden reduction and efficiency aspect, but also in general supporting the reporting flow, create a better regulatory environment and get more out of data. But I already used some terminologies which may or might have different understanding and the different listeners. So here I call in my colleague Cecile to take over from me and just frame the setting and the definitions. Cecile? Yes, so indeed, in order to to really um, to work in the scope of this uh, of this webinar, we need to define what regulatory reporting is, and our community uh, chose the definition that is here, meaning that it's the provision of structured and or unstructured data uh, by uh, private or public uh, organizations to EU competent authority that are mandated by EU law. And uh, this process, so it's it's a process, uh, we, we defined it with four main stages. And the first one is to set regulatory reporting requirements into EU law. The second one is uh, the acquisition of data due to these uh, mandated um, requirements, then the processing of those data, and then the use and reuse of those data or sharing is, is um, a kind of mix of use and reuse. And why do we want to, why were we, we, were we interested in uh, looking how emerging technologies could play a role into this um, uh, okay, uh, sorry, so can somebody provide the link to um, to Ulrich Peter to, to this uh, the, the meeting, please. He asked me in the chat. Okay, uh, Sofia, can you do that? Okay. Uh, and then, why are we interested in looking at uh, the emerging technologies? Because the the it's also matching with the process of the leg the legislative process. As you know, the legislative process. EU legislative process takes some years, and then it's interesting to see how emerging technologies can play a role in uh, into this um, the improvement of of those um, of this process. And what do we mean by emerging technologies? In fact, we mean uh, two things. So the ones that are currently being developed, and also the ones are that are in the process of being developed. So. Uh, and as examples, you have information, um, uh, what uh, Internet of Things or blockchain. You know the, the common, uh, the hype, hype words, um, sensors, etc. And then innovative approaches are more uh, to use to make the best use of existing information technology to improve the regulatory reporting process. So with this said, I think you have a setting and now we can move to the agenda. Also, if you have questions, you can still uh, add them in the either in the Teams chat or in the well later you will be guided. So uh, first to, to know how to 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 work with us today. So uh, the our team will present you how to use Miro. And uh, you will be there uh, asked to give your name, um, your expectations, etc. So this will be the first part of this meeting. You will have 10 minutes for this. Then uh, Wavestone will present this uh, big study that they did on, on the, the theme of uh, how emerging technology emerging technologies or innovative approaches are used within the regulatory reporting process and how uh, things um, so will a set of recommendations that uh, to improve uh, even the um, the landscape then uh, Emmanuel Poidevin will um, will come with a different uh, view so from his side as a private uh, sector he will present what he did to help SMEs in this uh, in this context and then there will be uh, room for you to exchange with us your ideas or to ask more questions or, and to well to to interact and to so that the overall understanding and um, maturity of the community increases so we really count on also on your to be to be fed 
by by your and will and to um, well to 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 sorry I had some connection some issues for... Cecile we couldn't hear you very well but I think you just ended up with wrapping up the agenda and maybe in the yes, yes. next uh, intervention you can cut your video and it, it will help but this is the moment that we call in then uh, the ladies from Wavestone to tell us where to go to find this virtual board and how to play with it it'll be yes. fun I like it a lot <laughs> Okay, perfect. So I'm going to take over from here. Uh, my name is Patricia, and as uh, Cecilia and Shofia said before, we are the Wavesun team, and we're going to help you navigate uh, the knowledge we've gathered on emerging technologies. So first of all, I've dropped a link in the chat. If everyone could join us there to go to the whiteboard, uh, you're going to be asked for a password. It's also written in the chat. The password is technology. Um, and for those who don't feel that comfortable using the tools, in any case, we're going to be watching out for the for the team's chat. We will be taking care of the questions we receive there and we will also include it in the whiteboard. But uh, that said, it's much more fun for you as an audience uh, to come here and uh, hang out with us. Um, I see we already have uh, some people here. I'm going to ask you to come all together to the same section um, to discuss a bit uh, some tips about how to use the the whiteboard. Um, basically, we what we are using is a, is it's a whiteboard, um, and it's an interactive platform to share knowledge and uh, to to raise uh, our questions, our suggestions. So on one hand, you have the option to just unmute yourself and share your ideas when we when we invite you to take part on the on the discussions. Or if you're a, mo a bit more introvert, or perhaps you have your kids in the background as well uh, running in your house, uh, and you prefer to stay silent but uh, you want to contribute, you can also uh, create sticky notes uh, by clicking on the right side on the left side of the mural. Uh, and you can see you have some instructions. Uh, you will have a pop-up saying sticky note, and then you just click on it and write your, your ideas. Uh, you will see that you can jump to different areas of the session, uh, but we will be calling you very often to the sections that we're discussing at the moment to make sure that we're all in the same page. Uh, and if you have any doubt, you can come back to this uh, to this area to see some instructions. Oh, we have a visiting human here. I see some of you are already playing with it. Great. Um, and uh, oh, some more. <laughs> You're very active already. That's great. OK, so to play a bit with the with the tool before we we get into the meat of it, we're going to ask you some questions so we can get to know each other and we can connect and see uh, why are we here and why? Why are we interested in this session? So uh, let's take 10 minutes to meet each other and we would like to ask you to tell us uh, who are you and where do you work and when you're done with that, that section to jump into uh, the next question which is how is your work related to regulatory reporting and lastly uh, what is your specific interest in regulatory reporting All right so I'm gonna start uh, clicking in one of the notes uh, my name is Patricia and I support the BLSI community. We've been working with different stakeholders to uh, gather their knowledge for the study of the report we will be discussing. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I see my other colleague from Waveston, Esther, Shofia from uh, Interoperability Unit. Uh, we have Cecile, uh, Emmanuel from France, uh, from e Attestations. Yes, one of our speakers, very interesting. We have Luke from Regium. Who else? We have Peter. Uh, we have uh, someone working, supporting legislative drafting. Very interesting, very relevant for this conversation. Uh, we have... Uh, this is Lava, Astrid. don't you? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Patricia. If some mm -hmm. of you are still not on the board, of course, at any moment you can see in the chat in Teams the link to the board. 
Mm -hmm. Or if you, for some reason, decide not to go to the board, but just look at the shared screen, you can, of course, always reply to the questions in the chat if you if it's much easier for you. Mm -hmm. Just because I saw that there is still a difference in the numbers of people in the teams and on Miro, so it's up to you. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's Peter speaking. Eh? I'm Peter van den Hill from Digifisma, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm logging in by uh, mobile phone because there is no way okay. I can connect with my commission address at the moment from my commission okay. phone. So I can so access. I, I, if, uh, if you tools, agree, uh, I would yeah. prepare a little sticky note for you because Peter, I know you well, so I will add Peter is yeah. with us remotely. From FISMA. Good. So some people are really talking about how their work is related to regulatory reporting. Perhaps it's not. Um, you can also share uh, how your work is related to perhaps emerging technology that was maybe your interest for joining the session. I see someone is in charge of the ITS amendments on reporting and disclosure. Mm -hmm. Someone is researching emerging technology in the public sector or fostering the streamlining of regulatory reporting. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's working in uh, reporting and transparency in the EBA. OK, IT and AI tools for policy screening. Launchpad, what is this? This uh, I, I don't have the the contextual information for this. Okay, I see we have some more people signing up for the who are you? We have Astrid from the Norwegian Agency for Digitalization. And we have Draluca Corona from the Solvency Second Data. GRC, the banking, the European Banking Authority. Oh, very interesting. And also, if you are, mm -hmm. I see some of you are super busy and already replying to the last question. So it's really a Ooh. playground now for everyone. If you are done with your replies, just go back and look at what are the other surprise. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of intuitive way to feel who is in the virtual room with us. Mm -hmm. So someone is interested in seeing how to reduce administrative burden. Um, Someone is interested in the link between the public and the private sector in this area. On how to use new digital tools to support more efficient regulatory reporting. Mm -hmm. We will see a bit about that today. Ah, someone is in charge of gathering the data and someone on analyzing the data. Very interesting. We will be poking your brain later on about these topics. <laughs> and someone is uh, on research and development. So I see we still have some people writing their last comments. Mm -hmm. But I think that now everyone in the room mm -hmm. has a feeling of how it is working together on this platform. And maybe then we can move on. So the first part of the webinar today is a bit more information sharing. So as you saw in the agenda, first you will share the, the findings of the report we did, mm -hmm. and then uh, Emmanuel will share his experience in the field from the private sector angle. And then we will come back together really playing around this tool and see your questions and, and also um, ideas. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether the team is ready to move on and start the session on the I think we are we right. Mm -hmm. We know course, each other a bit, so we can, yeah, let's do this. Okay. Uh, I will be handing now 
the yeah, torture I'm just, to my colleagues. <laughs> before going, I wanted just to add a little uh, explanation. So this is a report will be published uh, soon, but uh, we also will possibly consider your inputs today and, and your feedback on the, the recommendation we found. And just to the story of this report, so why I said that uh, with Cecile we are facilitating this BLSI community, we are keen of communities and we eventually facilitate a commission internal community as well, which called regulatory reporting community. And many of our participants today I think found us through that community. So there the intention is really to work together with uh, commission and uh, it's agencies, colleagues dealing with reporting flows through the various stages of the reporting process. And uh, we held also similar interactive sessions and, and uh, workshops uh, with the colleagues there. And we asked also what are the topics they are interested in and clearly technology and possibly emerging technology and how it can bring some added value for reporting was one of those topics. So this triggered the need to, to go and, and uh, dive into this topic and create a study. So that's just the background. And then I call in indeed uh, someone from the Wavestone team to bring us what we looked at in the study and what were our findings. Thank you, Sophia. I'm Monica. I'm from the Wavestone team. And together with my colleague Solana, I'm going to guide uh, all of you through this section. Now we are going to dive into our study, study on the use of emerging technologies and innovative approaches in regulatory reporting. The study has not been finalized yet, and indeed this webinar is going to be helpful to collect feedback and insights that are going to feed the study. Uh, I'm study sorry, I, I, I'm always intervening, but just for those who are still in Miro, maybe it's more relaxing and you can tune in better if you come back now to your Teams uh, meeting invitation and you look at the screen because we shared there the, the main content about which Monica or, or Solan is talking, so maybe it's easier for you to follow the presentation. And we will tell you when to move back to the Miro. Thank you, Sophia. So just a general overview of the study of this section. Uh, this section is divided in uh, two main parts. The first part, we provide you with the context, the overview and the objective of the study. And in the second part, instead, we will be present, we will present you with the study conclusions and the related recommendations. This recommendation will be illustrated through concrete examples that will be presented by my colleague Solana. So having said that, now we can start with the contest. The contest is the digital transformation, which is already happening and is expected to create within the next 10 to five years, five to 10 years actually, relevant changes in regulatory reporting, opening opportunities for its improvement. Emerging technologies and innovative approaches are already used by the European Commission and its agencies, but still not widely. That's why we saw a gap and the potential to be further explored and we decided to, to write this case study. This study focuses on existing and upcoming applications of emerging technologies and other types of innovative approach, approaches that contribute to reducing the administrative burden on SMEs in the regulatory reporting process and national and EU level. This focus on SMEs, on small and medium enterprises, was chosen in the frame of the European Commission's efforts to create a regulatory, regulatory business-friendly environment for small and medium enterprises, as demonstrated, for instance, by the SME tests or the Think Small First principle. This study, at the objective of the study, is to provide a set of recommendations that policy, legal, and IT experts working in the field of regulatory reporting at the Commission and the agencies can follow to successfully integrate emerging technologies into the regulatory reporting <coughs> process. Every step now switching to the scope of the study, this study follows a case study approach, which encompasses the entire report, regulatory reporting cycle and we mean by it that focus from uh, on the reporting cycle from the setting of reporting requirements till the data use and reuse. So going also through the data collection and analysis, the step that we mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. Regarding the case studies on which we focus on, we have involved different stakeholders 
from the European Commission, the agencies, but also market players and national public administration. I will just guide you through the case studies. There are four case studies that we consider. The first one was conducted with the help of DigiFISMA and ESMA, the European Security and Markets Authorities, and focuses on the strategy for supervisory data in new financial services and the proposal for a European single access point, the ESOP regulation. The second case studies uh, was conducted with the help of EFSA, which is the European Food Safety Authority, and explores the collection of surveillance data related to the food and safety domain with uh, a concrete example on the Sigma Animal Disease Data Model Project. The third case study uh, was uh, conducted with the Portuguese National Tax Authority, which focuses on the experience of the authority on value added tax return and uh, of SME's experiences in the use of emerging technologies in regulatory reporting. Lastly, the fourth case study was conducted with relevant stakeholders from Finland and focuses on two main illustrative initiatives that employ innovative technologies and approach it to facilitate data exchange and reporting. And these two illustrative examples are the Nordic Smart Government and the Startup Business Report. Now that we have concluded this introductory section to our case study, just to put it on to cost test, let's say, we can get to the presentation of uh, the conclusions and recommendations of our study. So the first conclusion is uh, emerging technologies have the potential to simplify the reporting process, but they come with certain preconditions that need to be taken into account by all stakeholders. These preconditions are exemplified in the three related recommendations that you can see just below. The first one, as you can see, is our queen recommendation because it's applicable to all the conclusion. And um, we will see soon why. This first recommendation is fostering internal consultation and an effective communication channel across DGs and agencies. So in this context, what we mean here is that it's necessary to have the effective communication within the European Commission and the agencies to enable, for instance, reasonable timelines for the implementation of emerging technologies and innovative approaches, as well as, for instance, dedicate the appropriate investments. Going to recommendation number two, which is uh, applying the once only principle and developing strategies to formulate the reporting requirements so that they are clear and to avoid overlapping consistencies. Here we mean that uh, another precondition for the use of emerging technologies is the streamlining of regulatory reporting requirements to avoid that information are reported by stakeholders multiple times under different, uh, different legislation. Finally, for this first conclusion, we have recommendation number three, which is uh, relying on already widely adopted and recognized standards as the basis of, uh, uh, for implementation. If you are familiar with emerging technologies, a very important precondition for their application is standardization. The creation of a common language that will allow for harmonization and will lead to structured data that can be automatically processed by emerging technologies. Now I will hand over to my colleague Solan that we provide you with some insights from our case studies. Yeah, exactly. So hi everyone, I'm Solan. So here uh, some uh, findings that we found uh, through the different case studies is uh, we have one example uh, uh, from Portugal uh, with the Portuguese tax authority. So in that case, uh, technology has been very useful in streamlining regulatory reporting. Uh, and this has been made possible by the adoption of common certified reports, which simplify the reporting process for taxpayers and apply the once only principle, which is one of the preconditions that we have identified in the study. So before uh, having this common certified report, taxpayers had to submit the same type of financial information and non-financial information to many different bodies, so several times each year. And with the common certified report, all these different reports are merged into one single declaration that is submitted to the tax authority. 
And in addition to that, in order to successfully implement and use the technologies, the main success factors of the tax authority in Portugal were the continuous communication established between the different departments of the authority, but also with other stakeholders such as reporting entities, software developers, and public accountants throughout the regulatory reporting process. So this uh, communication and collaboration in, among the different actors involved in the process were uh, done in a continuous way. And this communication and collaboration also led to better and uh, help them better understand and take into account the needs and then um, make them um, allow them to create a more user centric reporting uh, process. So here the different aspect like precondition that we have is the uh, application of the once only principle, the, uh, the um, structured collaboration and communication among actors and also the identification of needs to make the, the regulatory reporting uh, process more user centric. Then now I think uh, we can move to the next um, conclusion. Perfect. The second conclusion is uh, all actors involved in regulatory reporting are not necessarily impacted in the same way by the use of emerging technologies or the implementation of uh, innovative approaches. Some actors indeed may be even affected in negative ways and most actors will be affected at least at the beginning in negative ways because uh, with the implementation of new technologies there are always set up costs for the development and implementation of those technologies. And this is an important factor to consider, especially depending on the actors that we are talking about, on the stakeholders that we are targeting. This is why we want to focus your attention on recommendation four and five, which are aligning regulatory reporting process with the different needs of stakeholders concerned by involving them in the design process or by consulting them, and fostering communication campaign for the ultimate end users and stakeholders to ease adoption. Now, Solan, the floor is again yours to explain us a bit more about the impact so yes. of the So yes, as you just mentioned, Monique, so technical, uh, technological developments could help SMEs, for example, and other reporting entities to support the data more efficiently by limiting manual intervention and therefore reducing the number of manual mistakes. So it could be uh, very positive. So in this light, we have ESMA, the European Securities and Market Authorities, that believes that this, the distributed ledger technology, uh, much more uh, known under uh, the blockchain name, could be a game changer for the regulatory reporting process in the financial market and bring several benefits to yeah, the financial markets, including more efficient post trading services, improved regulatory reporting capabilities and reduced costs. Uh, another um, uh, example is the one of is up, which is the European single access point. So here, uh, in some other cases, we, we have seen that it is still uncertain what will be the impact of technologies and on which stakeholders uh, um, the impact will be positive or negative or nothing, or whether emerging technologies could help SMEs to report data more efficiently. So for example, the SAP uh, European single access point of the GFISMA is a good example of the positive but still uncertain impact that technological developments can have on uh, SMEs. Because this uh, SAP is a template that will be filled in by SMEs and made public on a voluntary basis. So SMEs will be able to choose or not to use it. And by making this template public, SMEs will not uh, need to send information to the regulators anymore, but will simply publish their financial and non-financial information on the platform, on the template, the SAP. So in that case, SMEs would increase their visibility and therefore be able to reach more investors in the EU market. And this will also avoid the double reporting. So this one, this was one illustrative uh, example. Thank you, Solani. Going to conclusion number three, this is uh, the use of emerging technologies can indeed support the stakeholders involved in the regulatory reporting process, but it comes with its numerous challenges. Indeed, uh, uh, there are several challenges uh, for the implementation of emerging technologies, such as the lack of digital data and standard, uh, standardized data, as we mentioned before, the lack of human resources to use emerging technologies that know 
how to use them. The dynamic and always changing nature of emerging technologies, the lack of time and money, and also the lack of interoperability across systems with uh, the connected and associated legal constraints. This is why we formulated two recommendations that could be helpful at this stage of development and implementation of emerging technologies, which are using of technologies that are intuitive, intuitive to use and that provide added value to the reporting parties and taking advantage of existing reusable tools. So let's say focus on our efforts or on intuitive, reusable and like technologies that bring added values to the stakeholders as a first step. Then uh, going to conclusion number four, key technologies, key potential emerging technologies were identified in our case studies with concrete examples to help reduce the administrative burden and streamline the regulatory reporting process on the regulatory and reporting side. We, in our study, when uh, you will be able, like when it will be published internally to the Commission and the agency, you will see the complete list of key emerging technologies that we have identified. For now, I'm just going to cite an example that is distributed ledger technologies, which will allow the switch from a push to a pull approach. And by this, I mean from having data push by the reporting entities to the authorities. Um, instead, instead of having this approach with the pool approach, the authorities will have direct access to a ledger, which will be part of the business process of the reporting entities. Connected to what I just said, indeed, we formulated recommendation number eight, which is considering a wider use of the pool approach to reduce the administrative burden on SMEs by having data pulled directly by the authorities in order to answer specific data needs. And again, we wanted to stress again the fact that it's important to take advantage of existing reusable tools. And Solana will uh, explain us why. Yeah, <laughs> so here you already mentioned one example, uh, Monica, which is the distributed ledger uh, technology. And uh, we have also identified a few others that, you, that are on the study, but here we can focus on, on coal, for example, which is the knowledge online on European legislation application from DigiFISMA. So this was created and is still being used by DigiFISMA and also now uh, by several other DGs in uh, other domains. So this uh, application, Call, is a web-based application that provides support for the setting of regulatory reporting requirements and contains information on all the existing regulatory reporting requirements across the financial acquis. So some other DGs and agencies are uh, using this tool, for example, DG Mare, DG Home, and DG Santé. Uh, to sh like, uh, so I can show you the reusable potential of, uh, of coal. And then we have another example, which is the, the, the model from uh, um, EFSA, uh, the Sigma project. And there is also one colleague here, Gabriele, that maybe will be able to answer your question later on, if you have any question about this one. So uh, these two tools uh, and data model, for example, in that case, uh, can be adapted to the needs of other DGs and agencies. So that was the example that I wanted to illustrate there um, that we could identify through the study. And finally, we have the last conclusion, uh, yes. number five. Which is uh, the use of emerging technologies in regulatory reporting cannot reduce the administrative burdens on regulators and reporting entities. However, it's not always the best or only solution. By this, we mean that emerging technologies are, of course, not the best or only solution. There are other effective alternatives, as Solani is going to tell us. And our recommendations related to this conclusion are mainly these two that I'm going to present to you now. The formulation of a long-term strategy to support the adoption and implementation of emerging technologies with dedicated investments, coordinated efforts, and data standardization, and the alignment of existing and upcoming initiatives so that technologies work with each other across units and departments, and also enable cross-border adoption with the European Union. By this, uh, we mean uh, our recommendation is to 
operation are connected to the fact that it is important to think in advance about how to align the current familiar practices with the digital transformation to avoid to have uh, inconsistencies in the upcoming years and to have uh, to make the necessary adjustments at a, a later stage. So, Land, the floor is and yours. Here uh, again, um, so since the use of imagery technology is not the only solution, in the first example that I explained about the Portuguese tax authority, case study here, uh, more traditional technologies and electronic submission practices uh, were in use and have been very useful but the main success factors uh, lied in the continuous communication between the actors involved in the process through a structured governance model. So here, uh, the use of emerging technologies is not the only uh, solution and could be complemented by something else, such as uh, the fostering of collaboration. And we have another example, the Sigma project that offers from EFSA that offers a model for data standardization on data submission, validation, analysis, and uh, reporting in relation to animal disease information. And this project ensures interoperability by map mapping all the national data structures to the Sigma animal disease data model. So this would increase the harmonization within the data collection processes. So here in this example, we see that um, EFSA in this project doesn't really need, doesn't use any emerging technologies to achieve an, an efficient and innovative uh, results. Um, I think that's it uh, for this uh, session uh, on the study findings. And of course, I see that many questions are being asked in the chat on Teams, uh, but we will have, of course, the opportunity to ad address them. Uh, in the next uh, session that will be much more interactive. But before that, I will uh, end over to Cecile, which will introduce uh, e-attestation, our uh, invited speaker. So hello again. So now we will have a hands-on case provided by uh, Emmanuel Poilevin who is the CEO and founder of uh, the company e-attestation, who is uh, in fact trying to uh, bridge the gap between all these regulatory reporting requirements that are put on the SMEs and to help them to, to, to support them as a service provider uh, to provide these, um, uh, these uh, well, to help them be compliant with the requirements set out by legislation. And what is very nice from uh, Emmanuel is that, in fact, his uh, customers, there are mainly SMEs in the EU, so he has a nice view on, on their problems. And uh, I'm really um, excited to, to have a hands-on demo of, uh, of your tool and how you support those people. So, Emmanuel, the floor is yours, and thank you for taking this time to be with us today. Yeah, hello. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, actually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here representing the actual uh, uh, economic operators world. Um, it, you guys are all uh, very used with uh, the legislation, the processes, but much more, uh, I would say, at uh, public entity level. And um, what you decide, uh, whether it's at legislation level or um, structure of data, um, actually people will have to fill in forms and to, uh, to, to do due diligences and assessments. And basically that's what we do. So I will have um, the opportunity to share with you two things. First, the PowerPoint. I apologize for my colleagues that are using the new technologies. So I rely very much on uh, efficient uh, but accessible technology. So I will share um, some slides of a PowerPoint and then we'll switch to uh, actual data and actual processes that we address uh, so that you can see um, the consequences and, and, and the use of uh, what you mentioned here. So let me start by sharing a PowerPoint. You know, it's a bit old fashioned. It's not new technology anymore, but it's reusable. Uh, you don't need to be trained. Um, I mean, easy access to information. Hope I hope you're. I'm sure the right screen. Yes, I am. So um, a brief introduction of uh, um, um, who we are. Uh, we are actually um, 
uh, an SME, it's uh, it's uh, almost uh, 7 billion euros uh, company. We're a software editor based in France. And um, our job is um, third party management, meaning our clients are uh, principals from both public and private sectors. And what we do for them is um, process all the due diligences and assessments for more than uh, 300,000 uh, economic operators or suppliers uh, in the private sectors, you would say. And basically, we uh, not only gather the information, but verify the information and process information so that they can um, uh, govern uh, all of their compliance issue. Or uh, it's not only about legislation, it, it's about risk uh, also. Um, so this is what we call third party governance, risk and compliance, and we deliver it mainly through um, online tools, could be SaaS portals or more and more API. I will uh, go back later on um, on the API part of uh, 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 the, the, the the exchange of the stem. So just to understand what we do um, and what we talk about legislation or assessment or um, we do gather and make sure um, that the identity data is reliable and up to date. We care about the legal, the onboarding, the certificates and technical abilities, uh, the, the risk indemnity insurance, the labor law, the account payable fraud, the financial standing, the anti-bribery, security and data protection, uh, CSR, green, uh, greenhouse gas footprint, a wide scope uh, of all of what is applicable to, let's say, a relationship between a client and uh, a supplier. Um, in 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 our case, and and especially at the European legislation level, um, we have a common framework on uh, public procurement, and um, this is uh, probably what uh, one of the most uh, efficient uh, progress that have been that have appeared uh, uh, across Europe. Uh, a common framework in public procurement, uh, even if every country has its own local legislation, there is a. a, a a common framework for uh, uh, the required criteria for uh, economic operators to participate to public procurement, meaning grounds related to insolvency, conflict of interest, economic and financial standing, technical and professional ability, and so on. So what we discovered and what is linked to, um, um, in the old days, uh, all of the subjects were very um, separated and in silos. And Right now, um, mo most of the organization have a holistic approach. It's an all-in. We want to know everything and 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 on, on a daily basis, we want to gather all of the information. It's not uh, several processes during time. It's we want to have a, a holistic approach. Uh, we started uh, in France like um, almost 14 years ago, and then we went um, <clears throat> very fast to uh, Europe. And now it's not only uh, um, European uh, level um, uh, issue because we we have suppliers all across the world. I'll share later on. Um, ecosystem. This is the word we use uh, to uh, sharing and and use uh, reusable uh, data, and um, and uh, you don't need uh, all the time a structured governance. Uh, is uh, uh, in our world, in the software world, uh, the API is what allows us to share and integrate uh, already existable and processable uh, data. Meaning, <clears throat> back to one of your conclusion, that our clients, they already have some uh, <coughs> IT tools like uh, ERPs and, and, uh, and Procum tools or um, ERPs like SAP. And uh, they they use our services within their own system uh, using API. And and you've got here examples of what we do, meaning processing um, uh, due diligences and assessment. And and they get it within their own uh, tools. Um, the benefits: um, reliable data. <clears throat> up-to-date information, uh, reliability, auditability, trust, privacy, data protection. Uh, you've been mentioning the cost of setup, but actually, if you've got a global cost uh, approach, you will see that uh, the, the initial setup cost of uh, using new technologies 
is most of the time uh, um, very uh, efficient when uh, um, considering the, re uh, the reducing of the cost uh, for the processing. Uh, uh, and in the uh, total cost uh, thinking, uh, most of the time it's very efficient uh, also at investment level. Um, back to uh, some issues also, and, and basically the, 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 the most difficult part uh, of processing this is um, the standardized frameworks, the rules, uh, and we have to also by design consider the industry, the geography, the size, and the risk. Uh, global and standardized framework is not applicable to uh, any company because they, they, there are some big companies and there are some um, individuals uh, that are um, that could be considered as uh, economic operators. So now I promised I, I switched to the live demo. I love risk. And I will share another screen. Are you still with me? I hope so. Did anyone understand what we Perfect. do? Yeah, still. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Let's switch to uh, the risky part of the demo. Okay, and we go to this screen. Okay, first, the truth. Uh, those are actually um, companies uh, filling in forms and signing uh, documents and uh, updating uh, evidences. Uh, those are actual economic operators, suppliers, companies, you can call them whatever, that are using the system. So it's, of course, at European level, you see it's um, a lot of people, but it's how um, we are growing uh, worldwide also. There are lots of companies from different sides, from different industries, filling in and doing their due diligences and um, basically uh, what we deal uh, with is you know green light and red light uh, did they fulfill um, uh, uh, the respected assessment uh, the due diligences let me show you some and share uh, you some so you've got information of the company that can be gathered through api linked to uh, already existing system and then you can have access to um, evidences uh, like uh, um, qualification or um, attestations, certificates, uh, um, pre-populated forms, and so on and so on. So this is actually the kind of data uh, that we collect. Uh, it can be uh, purely data, it can be also um, documents and evidences, and um, we we do not only collect and check and update and maintain it. Uh, thanks to new technology, we were able to share it and make them available in any language uh, because you you just have to to consider that um, translation is not an issue anymore or making the uh, uh, different kinds of data available to anyone is not an issue anymore. And when processing information, this is a sample, um, but, you know, French centric, I apologize. You, you know, we, we uh, French are a, a bit French centric, uh, even at European level. Uh, but this is kind of uh, um, data analysis um, that when you gather information, then you can filter and drain down, for example, Example here uh, on a large scope uh, of uh, uh, 700 uh, companies, you can uh, have a look specific in uh, SMEs here. So I I want to filter and read down all my analysis by uh, SME, and maybe in a specific industry. So it could be like um, IT, for example, and then I would like to go specifically in a in uh, East, uh, and then you can filter and drill down and have uh, uh, any information or scope uh, that is accessible. This is uh, because of technology. This is uh, because of, uh, um, let's say, big data and data analysis tools. So, okay. Emmanuel, these uh, these reporting tools that are also provided to to uh, administrations, or are they just for your own uh, use? No, no, no. Actually, we we uh, as you understood, our first job is to process all the due diligences, not only regulatory, because they are, uh, I would say, risk and regulatory are uh, uh, the main concern of uh, uh, of our clients. 
Uh, it's not only regulatory. Risk is, is a huge part right now of their due diligence. Uh, uh, and then um, the way we deliver uh, to them the information can be through a SaaS portal I showed you. You've got an interface, you can see uh, the company information and, and we collect from any data provider. It can be open data, it can be public data, it can be private data, it could be scoring companies. And we gather them in a standardized framework and, 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 and you can compare companies. You've got some scoring, green light, red light, whatever. Or we deliver them through uh, processable data, could be through API or even batches, so that they can process on their own because they have IT, they have people to do that. They have systems that are able to process the data. And most of the time, um, they ask us to actually deliver uh, uh, the, the analysis uh, through, uh, you've seen here, it's uh, uh, used like tools like Tableau or it could be uh, uh, whatever software. But act, most of the time people actually have tools but not knowledge to actually process and gather data and, ma and make it accessible. So most of our clients, even if they have their own re internal reporting team, they ask us to in, uh, to deliver uh, the 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 end user interface very accessible for public policies, for instance. Okay, so uh, very interesting, and I I would like now that uh, the audience uh, provides you their questions, so that uh, because I see in the chat that Caroline has had a question, but it's not really uh, to you. It's more um, it's more to to us, I think. So, uh, but if you do, you have questions to ask to Emmanuel. If not, I, I suggest. Oh, sorry, I suggest that uh, you put it uh, in the chat, and we move into the interactive session also to catch up a bit with our timing. Would it be fine? I apologize. <laughs> no, we started no. late. Uh, nothing to be sorry about. It's not you. <laughs> it's not you. Um, I will be sharing my screen shortly. Well, uh, there is a question to you. Ah, OK, great. So uh, which coordinate system do you use for graphic representation of data? So um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we I'm not promoting any system here. I'm not making any advertisement. It depends very much uh, on um, the kind of data you want to process, uh, whether it has to be geographical data or, or filter and drill down by uh, in maps, for instance. In this case, we use uh, BWE or Tableau. Those are, you know, um, uh, softwares um, um, that are on the market. So, um, and and for uh, some other kind of data, we we are not linked to a specific uh, software. We 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 choose the um, uh, easiest and more uh, reliable. Here in this case, this was a BWE a tool uh, from a French company. I can put the link uh, to several uh, kind of uh, data processing analysis uh, that you can use depends on the kind of data and the scope of data you want to analyze but i would say my favorites uh, bwe and tableau are actually very very good but uh, it was more about uh, whether it's uh, now i forgot uh, the standard g w g Ah, oh, this you know the coordinates on the in the GIS in the geographical information systems. I think it was the question. No, not about uh, Tableau or uh, but the, the the for geographical oh, yeah, representation. Yeah, okay. Actually, which, we, okay, got you. Yes, uh, G W G. Uh, I forgot. Actually, actually, in our database, um, as we have different clients from different countries using different systems, we are able to deliver the data in whatever format uh, uh, they ask for. Uh, I'm not that technical, so I'd, I would like to avoid uh, um, telling you uh, the wrong information, but um, I'm just letting you know that uh, we have the process and uh, we have different formats available. So uh, it depends very much. So is Tableau GDPR compliant? Not uh, uh, unless you use it on premise on your uh, local server in Europe or um, but if you use the online platform, not well. It, it's yeah, they are GDPR. They say they are GDPR compliant, 
but if you go further on, it's an American company at the end. So if you use it on premise, yes. OK, so may I propose that if you have more questions, we, you keep you put them in the chat and we will try or Emmanuel on this path will try to answer uh, in written uh, so that we can move on because uh, yeah. we are. A it's it's a, a bit okay. specific. My apologies. Yeah, also. No, no, it's not you. It's the question was specific. OK. <laughs> Great, so uh, the floor is now on the to you, Solène. Yes, Patricia. And, uh, yeah, Patricia yes. will be facilitating the next session. Yes, uh, and I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I hope you can see it. Otherwise, please shout out. Uh, we're going into the co-creation session where we're going to be voting on the most interest or relevant uh, recommendations and we will discuss a bit. So some of your questions might be addressed in this situation, but just to let you know that if we don't have the chance to answer all your questions, we will uh, get back to all of you with the summary of the of the session and the questions answered. So um, fear not. I'm going to uh, call everyone back to the same area of Miro and I would like to invite you to join us again. Uh, my colleagues will be dropping again the link in case you have closed the um, the page, but uh, for the voting session we're going to need you to to be in the platform. Um, so uh, first of all, we're going to be doing the voting then we're going to be discussing a bit more uh, of the good practices you might be heard of or concrete examples that you think are linked to the recommendations and then in the last uh, part of this session we're going to see if you have any additional comments because you think that there are some missing points or uh, you you want to add a different angle or propose even your own recommendations for this um, yeah, so uh, let's have a quick look at the recommendations again to remind you what is uh, to be voted. And then my colleague Solem will launch the voting. So the first one was aligning the regulatory reporting process with the different needs of the stakeholders concerned by involving them in the design process or by consulting them ad hoc. Uh, the second one is fostering internal consultations and a communication process between the different departments involved at all governance levels and between EU, public and private actors and from the inception phase to the implementation of a new legislation and uh, related uh, reporting obligations. Then we have the third, applying the once only principle, very important, and developing strategies in line with, uh, oh, we, we have already the, the voting yeah. session started. Should we launch yeah, it? Yeah, I think so it would be nice to yeah launch it and then we can go through the recommendation one by one. Okay, great. So uh, I won't be participating. Uh, and I'm I sorry, just for the audience. So it means that everyone can pick how many uh, recommendations which yes. he should yeah. like. Maximum three uh, votes. Okay. Yeah. So out so of the while you're listening or in your own uh, pace reading through the recommendations, please mark three of them which you see I think are the most relevant, at least based on your experience. OK. Mm -hmm. And we will give you a couple of minutes to catch up with the voting. But how do we? How do we mark them? Uh, when you have uh, the pop up, you choose a, a vote and then you are offered them uh, and you have to click on plus one. Next to the number of the recommendation, you will see a plus logo mm -hmm. that you can select and add your vote. Then I think we can continue uh, reading the recommendation, uh, mm -hmm. Patricia. Uh, yeah, I hope it uh, is not too disturbing while you decide how to vote. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, let's do that. Um, so uh, the applying the once only principle and developing strategies in line with the EC corporate reference data management, very important. Uh, relying on already widely adopted and recognized standards as the basis for implementation. So not to create new ones, but reuse what is already in place. Uh, for example, standardized taxonomies uh, that can be uh, reused for other data models. Um, aligning existing and upcoming initiatives so that uh, the technologies work with each other across units and departments, so interoperability, very important for um, for innovative approaches and emerging technologies. 
uh, fostering communication campaigns for the ultimate end users and stakeholders to ease the adoption for them as well. Uh, it, it also has to be easy to use not only for um, for us, the uh, regulatory parties, but also the, the parties that want to report the data. Um, the seventh recommendation, taking advantage of existing tools. Uh, the eighth, formulating a long-term strategy to support the adoption and implementation of emerging technologies with dedicated investments, efforts, uh, and uh, the data standardization we've mentioned before. And then the last two, uh, first considering a wider use of the pool approach to re reduce the administrative burden on SMS, SMEs by having pool data uh, data pulled directly from the authorities, so uh, to avoid um, double reporting, etc. And last but not least, taking advantage of the existing reusable tools such as COIL and other models like Sigma's data model that has been mentioned before. And uh, Gabriel said that there will be some uh, upcoming more um, version very soon. Um, that is it. I think more or less uh, you should have an idea of what each of them imply. Otherwise, please comment if uh, you have any questions and uh, we give you a bit of time to finish the voting. Yes, indeed. And uh, if you have already done with your voting, you can use this little post-its under each recommendation to add your question or comment or idea related to the given recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, I see that almost all the participants have uh, finished uh, their voting, so I will end in a few seconds. So please make your... Tan, tan, tan. <laughs> yeah. A bit of pressure. So I will, I will end the vote so we can quickly uh, see the results. Thank you everyone for your participation. End session. Voilà. Okay, four, two, and one. The most voted ones. And then uh, we can see. Ah, oh, very nice. So let's start looking at uh, the number four, which has been the most voted one. Uh, relying on already widely adopted and recognized standards as the basis for implementation. Yes, yes, this is very, very important. Um, number two the second most voted one, fostering internal consultations and a communication process between the different departments involved at all governance levels and between EU public and private actors. Hmm. And then the first one, it's the third most voted one, aligning the regulatory reporting process with the different needs of stakeholders concerned by involving them in the design process or by consulting them. Yes, so... Um, having a holistic approach about the needs of every stakeholder involved, basically. Um, OK, this is the, the moment where we would like to invite you now uh, to share your own experiences and your own opinion about the recommendations and also perhaps how to further uh, develop them or how to polish them. Um, if you have concrete examples, that would be very interesting. For instance, uh, the Sigma project uh, could be a very good example of the first one uh, because they they took into account the challenges that the member states were encountering and the reporting parties more on the company's level um, and such. So I see uh, we're staying a bit shy. We don't yeah. have contributions yet, uh, but we can take some time for this so think about it and let's uh, and also i think this uh, good experiences is not only related to the recommendation but you can also if you just scroll down or, or patricia you, you yes. convene others there is this greenish section mm -hmm. where you can really add anything either what you missed from the mm -hmm. report findings or trigger their interest from emmanuel's presentation or really it's just the kind of knowledge harvesting before we close the session today Mm -hmm. 
it's really your opportunity to voice what you want and what you need to see from this area in the future. So we might not be able to offer you answers for everything, but it's good to already have some uh, milestones defined, identified uh, to go forward. And uh, like uh, Solène or Shufia mentioned at the beginning, we're going to include many of your suggestions in the, the report. So voila. Yeah, maybe some of the recommendations are lacking uh, of not clarity, but could be complemented by more specified information. Mm -hmm. uh, so the type of authority that could be responsible for um, choosing the right standards. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw some comments about this. So yeah, these yes. uh, comments are very relevant uh, to us so that we can be more specific in, uh, in our study and check with the relevant and concerned uh, stakeholders also for more input. Hello. Yes. yes. <laughs> Can I? Yes. I mean, it, yeah. Gabriel. It's, it's thanks a lot, by the way. It's, that was really interesting. It was really nice to. It's it's nice to be among friends facing the same problems or issues that, uh, yeah, maybe different topics, but indeed uh, we share the same the same needs. So thanks a lot. And um, no, I was just saying that it's not a matter of being shy. You know very well that normally I speak out without major problems. And uh, but if if I if I can just stress again what mm -hmm. uh, what 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 is the problem that we face the most here are basically two that are somehow interrelated. Two or three depends. Um, I think that what we see is that there is still we are not still we are not yet at the same level of uh, technology in all in all countries in uh, in Europe um, there are still uh, discrepancies uh, different levels across Europe and this is probably well at least part of of the problem uh, definitely we mentioned that before uh, I think that um, we, we need to invest on that mm -hmm. Um, this can be done, of course, uh, providing money. That normally helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, supporting, well, or at least guiding uh, the, the 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 right usage, the correct usage of of this money, of these fundings, um, by means of uh, of legislation. And I give you, I tell you why. I try to explicit my thought. Uh, the fact is that in, in, in our specific case in Sigma, when we request for some information, uh, some data provider may not even record it because it's not required by the legislation. And, and that's kind of reasonable if it's not required by the European Commission, for instance, why they should um, spend money and, uh, and efforts uh, to record that information that is maybe useful only for, for EFSA. Um, so this is why I see the three aspects of the, of the things, um, mm -hmm. of, the, of this issue, the technology, the budget, uh, and uh, the uh, legislation side of the story, and they all go together. Not sure if I was clear? Very clear. Thanks a lot, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel was uh, very kindly contributing to this study. So if you're interested in what he's mentioning, uh, it will be a bit more elaborated in the in the study once it's out. Um, technology patent and legislation. Uh, Emmanuel, you would like to take uh, the Oh, you're on mute, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are muted, Emmanuel. Yeah. Am I still? Now, now you are okay. Okay. Um, um, to be very pragmatic, um, um, uh, maybe a missing part, maybe because I'm, uh, I'm um, from the, the private sector. Um, there are. Um, Pretty simple stuff that um, I was uh, feeling missing. Um, let mm -hmm. me explain. Open data. 
Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. open data um, has to be mentioned here. It's a, it's a, um, a and make some uh, trustable and consistent open data processable by all of the actors. All of the actors is is very linked to what what we mentioned mm -hmm. here. Uh, it's accessible to the citizen, and and, and so if we sh we shall invest in open data, rather than less uh, than let uh, private sector take mm -hmm. uh, uh, this. Uh, second one is I already mentioned it API. Mm -hmm. uh, API is now the, the way you build and you exchange information, and uh, mentioning your um, pool that are. Uh, rather than push, that's exactly uh, what you do with API. You you request information, and if if we don't get them, then there is another process. So, open mm -hmm. data and API mm -hmm. has it's it's already existing, but and 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 everybody can access it, and it's for even at citizen level, uh, those should be more accessible. <laughs> Very good. Many nice. thanks. And I see and that I people are already contributing. Yes. Uh, uh, no, no, because I, I'm vigilant that we, we have one mm -hmm. minute left, but I'm also yes. super happy because I see that uh, the contribution started to flow in on the visual board. So what I suggest that time-wise we now wrap up and close, but those of you who are really motivated, please finish your thoughts, right? The, the visual board remains open and we will then harvest, we will put all it in a structure, the um, takeaway message, and, and we will send you also, of course, with the, the study link as well. And then really just close, there is a little wrap up session on the, mm -hmm. on the board, but basically the message is very simple. Stay in touch, please uh, come members of our BLSI community. And uh, then we will stay active there around the topic of regulatory reporting. So you can always start new discussions and also look for existing and new resources like linked to regulatory reporting. We have already a little paper uh, around the regulatory reporting principles uh, and also very recently a kind of uh, how to onboard metadata, very kind of uh, very start uh, entry level uh, discussion around metadata and reporting. So with that, I would like to thank you to all. I thank you, Emmanuel. It was indeed, I think, a new flavor you brought. <laughs> and there was silence, but for me, and I put this comment, uh, for me, one of the huge learning of today is really learning each other language and learning each other needs. And this is for public administrations and lawmakers is crucial to really not only just have the, the intention to cut burden and call the, uh, but, but really work hand in hand and understand the needs. And for that, and this is what all our work around the BLSI community and interoperabilities to, to start speaking each other language and start understanding each other. So I think it was really precious for me, a, a big learning and something we will work farther, possibly with you together. I hope so. <laughs> so many thanks for everyone and see you next time. Hope so. Thanks see a lot. Back. Bye yes. bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Have a good day. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a nice day.